Welcome to Another Night in the NBA. This is your 10 minute recap of the last night of NBA hoops. And there were a few different games today, but the biggest story to me is the Atlanta Hawks blowing out the Milwaukee Bucks. I would say this is easily the biggest surprise of the night and the Hawks kind of shocked the NBA here. This is a team that lost in the opener to the Charlotte Hornets. They lose to the Knicks in their second game. And then they come out and they beat the Bucks basically by 20 points, 127 to 110. This game wasn't even really close. So it was like a 20 point game at halftime and the Hawks from early on kind of owned this game and everybody's been talking about the Bucks and how great they are they have Giannis and Dame they're one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference which I still believe they are but the Hawks run them off the floor it's just not even close they hold Damian Lillard to only six points on two of 12 shooting shout out to DeJounte Murray and some of the other guys that guarded him Hunter did for a little bit uh, but it's just it's easy win for the Hawks and this is a team that had their star has been shooting horribly to start the year through two games Trey Young was shooting like 23 percent from the field shoots in the 30s tonight 5 of 14 but does lead the team in scoring with 20 uh, but it's just a bunch of different guys for the Hawks here but the biggest guy I want to talk about is Jalen Johnson who's breaking out in this year with the Hawks we saw kind of a glimpse of it with Quinn Snyder last year where all of a sudden he was like a much bigger piece of the rotation you know the previous coach Nate McMillan didn't really Really playing what he should have but gets the minutes with Quinn Snyder and continues to get minutes this year finishes tonight with 14 points seven rebounds and two steals and just was a phenomenal player in the first half was kind of the biggest reason they built up their lead you know when you look at guys who are tall athletic can play make those are guys that you want because he's leading the team up the break he's making plays but the biggest thing biggest change in Jalen Johnson's game is that he's hitting threes now he's hitting threes he's spacing the floor he's a highlight machine throwing down dunks blocking shots and Jalen Johnson it just looks like a completely different player he was one of the best high school recruits goes to Duke kind of like is okay at Duke goes like mid first round the Hawks take a flyer on him doesn't do much for his first year or two and now all of a sudden he's here with the Hawks and he's playing great. He looks like the Hawks like third best player right now. I'd say it's Trey DeJounte and Trey's been underwhelming but still everybody knows Trey's their best player. It's been Trey DeJounte and Jalen Johnson who was just great tonight and has been great all season. He's averaging like 16 points a game for the year so far in nearly 30 minutes because Quinn Snyder just can't take him off the floor because he makes such a positive impact. When you look at other guys for the Hawks though, Onyeka Okongwu with 14, 7 of 11 11 from the field and seven rebounds has kind of been called the Giannis stopper in the past because Okongwu always does a great job defensively on him but tonight wasn't quite as good defensively on Giannis. Giannis finished 9 for 14 he had 26 points 11 rebounds but didn't take over the game he was solid it was a decent Giannis game but he didn't take over he wasn't super aggressive even though Damian Lillard wasn't performing there was no Chris Middleton and just everyone on the Bucks was a pretty not great. In terms of plus minus, almost every starter for the Bucks was a minus 20 or worse. Only Giannis was better than that at minus 11. Every one of these Bucks players just wasn't performing well. And Clint Capella, really solid 12 points, 12 rebounds. Uh, DeJounte Murray finishes with the best plus minus on the Hawks with a plus 26 15 points five assists doing a little bit of everything I liked how DeJounte looked in this game shot 50% from the field so uh, not a bad DeJounte game at all I liked how he looked and DeAndre Hunter continues a better offensive season so far 15 points and four steals great defensively as well 60% from the field and 50% from three in this game DeAndre Hunter looks like a much improved offensive player which it's I'd say a lot of people, even myself included, kind of thought that was out the window. You know, we've been waiting on the DeAndre Hunter offensive leap for years now, and he just hadn't made it. So many people thought it just wasn't going to come. He was going to be a solid starter, a good defender, but not really ever taking an offensive leap. But offensively now, he looks different and he looks good. But Jalen Johnson looks like a guy who can be a star for this Hawks team. I loved how Jalen Johnson looked. I thought he was 
arguably the most athletic player on the floor. It's kind of frustrating the Bucks guys with how he was playing. Uh, you know, there was a point where he got like a delay of game he didn't like, and Bobby Portis got teed up for yelling at him. Uh, but Jalen Johnson looks great for the Hawks. It is a Jalen Johnson breakout season. I've been telling you guys for months, I love Jalen Johnson. This is going to be his year, and he looks great tonight. And Yeka Kongwu good as well. The Hawks' young core is better than people think. Sadiq Bey as well should shout him out. 13 points, 9 rebounds, and a plus 23 for Sadiq Bey. You look at guys for the Bucks. yes it was 26 from Giannis, but again just an okay Giannis game, not a stellar one. He's not putting up like 40 like you'd expect in a great Giannis game. Uh, 6 from Damian Lillard, 13 from Brooke Lopez, 18 from Malik Beasley, who's their second leading scorer, and Jay Crowder, who started in place of Chris Middleton, only had 2 points. So not a great game from the Bucks, who are supposed to be contenders. This is not what you want to see in your second game. The biggest thing with them is people thought their defense might take like a drop off after uh Drew Holiday left, but their offense was the problem tonight. Their offense looked awful, especially in the first half, in the first quarter, where they had only like 20-something points. They just didn't look good. But the Hawks win this easily. It's a Jalen Johnson breakout season, and the Hawks shocked the league by blowing out the Bucks in their third game of the season. But now let's shoot around the league and look at some of the other games, some of the top performers, and the other action from around the league. So let's look at some different action from around the league as we had a bunch of pretty good games tonight, but I want to start us off with Lakers versus Kings, a game that went to overtime, a game that saw a lot of different things happen. De'Aaron Fox gets injured in the fourth quarter, but plays the fourth hits a huge shot that sends it to overtime and then doesn't play overtime with the injury. Sabonis has fouled out and the Kings win by five in overtime on the backs of Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. Malik Monk finishes with... 22 points. Kevin Herter finishes with 12, but hit what was essentially the game winner. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron both played pretty well. 30 and 16 for AD, 27 and 15 for LeBron. Uh, Austin Reeves has continued to struggle in this early part of the season. One of 12 from the field, and Gabe Vincent doesn't feel like he's been worth the money that they gave him either. Uh, moving on from this Lakers game, let's talk about the Warriors game. The Warriors beat the Rockets 106 to 95, led by. Steph Curry because of course they were who hit a huge shot down the stretch then proceeded to mock Dylan Brooks as basically everybody does these days 24 points for Steph Curry and Chris Paul once again leads the bench with seven assists so the two guys thing still really is working with Steph Curry leading the opening unit and Chris Paul leading the second unit continues to work they beat the Rockets by 11 the Rockets I would say their best player was Alperin Shangoon once again 19 points seven assists and five rebounds for Shangun, but the Warriors win by 11, send the Rockets to 0-3 in what was supposed to be a bounce-back year for them. Uh, then I'll talk about Nuggets Thunder, which was the early game of the day. It was the reigning champs against the up-and-comers. This was supposed to be a real test for the Thunder to see if they're able to be true contenders at this point. And the Nuggets beat them by 33. It is a blowout. The Nuggets destroy them. Nikola Jokic against Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren's first real test of a great big man. And he just can't stop Jokic at all. I mean, no one can, but Chet definitely couldn't. 28 points for Jokic, 14 rebounds, and 5 assists. They win so easily and then Peyton Watson for them I want to shout him out 17 points and four rebounds eight of 11 continues to look like a great two-way player for the Nuggets and just another gem that they found uh, for the Thunder in their defense Chet Holmgren did have 19 points four rebounds seven of 12 from the field Jokic couldn't stop Chet either Chet played pretty well offensively in just an atrocious game from Shea Gildas Alexander finishes two of 16 with seven points just not what you want from your star player looking at other games around the league there were two other games the Clippers beat the Spurs by 40 hold Victor Wembanyama to only 11 points and I'd say their best player was Russell Westbrook who finished with 19 points 8 rebounds and 3 assists 8 of 13 from the field Kawhi is 21 PG has 19 and they just destroy the Spurs who are led in scoring by Devin Vassell with 14 they only score 83 points for the game very poor offensive showing from the San Antonio Spurs 
Clippers, Clippers handle them. Then the 76ers blow out the Blazers by basically 30. Uh, 28 is what they win by, 126 to 98. It was initially planned to be a rest day for Joel Embiid. They got a lot of flack for it on social media, and Joel Embiid ended up playing. And boy, was he great. 35 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 6 blocks. What a game from Joel Embiid. 26 from Maxi, who continues to look like a star. And then the Trailblazers, Shaden Sharp, had his best game of the early season yet. 20 points, 7 of 13. Look like their best player today. And DeAndre Ayton with 7 points and 9 rebounds. He's supposed to be better. He was supposed to be the headliner of this Dame trade. Malcolm Brogdon continues to be great off the bench for them with 18 points. But that's going to do it for this night of games. But as we're always going to do, you know, this is a recurring segment on the show now. Let's look at the top five players of the night according to Real Sports. I want to look at that. Shout out the top five performances from this night in NBA basketball. And the number one performance comes in from Joel Embiid, who had 35 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 6 blocks. Dominant against Portland. DeAndre Ayton was getting cooked in the post. Nothing he could do. De'Aaron Fox at number two with 37 points eight assists and four rebounds takes the second spot despite not being able to play overtime it's going to be unfortunate if he has to miss any time with that ankle injury because of how great he's been. At number 3, Anthony Davis with 30 points, 16 rebounds, and 3 blocks. Jokic at 4 with his 28, 14, and 75% shooting. And then Steph Curry comes in at number 5, 24 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 made threes, as well as a couple of big ones down the stretch. But that's going to do it for this night in the NBA, another night in the NBA. Think about subscribing, I'm on the road to to 12,000. But thank you guys for watching. I'm Herm. Have a good one.